Hello and welcome to the Sage 300 training video. Our topic today is going to be accounts payable invoices. To start, let's go to the accounts payable module, AP transactions. We can either start in the invoice batch list or directly in invoice entry. Let's start with and take a look at the invoice batch list. In the invoice batch list, we see all the batches that have been created up to this point in time. We can see that they have either been created by hand, where the source application is accounts payable, or come from some other batch, in this case, the purchase order module. We can see that the status of all of these are posted. We can double confirm that by checking, unchecking, the show posted and deleted batches button there and we see that there are no open batches. So if we want, we can hit the new batch to start a new batch. Or we can come directly into invoice entry and click the new button. If we had an existing batch, we could use the finder to find that batch and select it. Next thing we would want to do is put in a batch description. Batches in Sage 300 are made up of one or many entries. We start here, of course, on our very first entry. So we're going to put in entry description. Our next field is the vendor number. If you know the vendor number, you can type it in, hit tab, and it will pull all the information in. If you don't know the vendor number, you can use your finder and select your vendor from your list of suppliers. You can also use the green plus button here to create a new vendor. This will open up the vendor screen. For instructions on how to create a new vendor, please see our video on AP vendors. If needed, you can use the remit to location and select a particular remit to location our next field is document type. By default, it will be the invoice. However, you can select other document types with credit note being the next most common type of document. We, our next fields are the document date and the posting date. The document date should be the date that is on the invoice from your vendor. The posting date is the date that you want that to hit your accounting books. Most of the time, those two dates will probably be the same. However, there may be cases where you are backdating the document date because of a late arrival of the invoice, but that particular period is closed. Let's say we received an invoice for January 31st. Now, fiscal period for January is closed. And when I tab out of that, I'm going to get a warning message. Warning, document date corresponds to period one in fiscal year, which is locked in common services. So I know at this point, if I try to post this transaction, it would error out because this period is locked. However, I want to date my document, this older date, so that it comes out properly in the aging. So what I can do then is mark that as posting today and have my entry hit my February accounting books, but from a document perspective and an aging perspective, it's going to age as of the 31st. I can then look at the terms codes on here and I can see right, right now, my terms codes is 60 day multiple payments. And so that is ca calculating out um, according to the due date or the terms established on here. If I want, I can change my terms just to a simple net 30 days. And that changes my screen here. And that sets 30 days after January 31st, which is March 1st. Continuing on, I can say what my document number is. Now this can also contain letters. So it could be, you know, some organizations will put like an IN 
or something next to their number for an invoice. If I have a PO I want to reference or a sales order number I want to reference, I can enter those into here. Those will automatically be filled if the, the information uh, was set up in the purchase order module and the uh, invoice was created down there and was processed into the accounts payable module. If I have 1099 information, that will automatically appear over here. Um, my next field is my document number. So let's say I was just having a simple invoice of $1,000. And if I needed to report that on a 1099, if that was uh, something that was eligible for a 1099, I can mark that here in the 1099 amount. Because we have a distribution code already set up on this particular supplier, that appears in here. So it has pre-filled my GL account and I can simply put in the amount of my transaction. If I want, I have some additional fields over here. I can put a comment in here. Um, I could track my optional fields if I needed to on my individual transaction. Looking at a few of the other screens here on the invoice entry, I have a taxes tab. So for those who are tracking sales taxes on purchases, which is more common in Canada than it is the United States, I could enter that information on here. And most likely that would be set up on the vendor record itself and processed automatically onto the invoice entry screen. In our case, this particular supplier is set up to be tax class two, which is a non-taxable amount so our total tax is zero. We have the terms code that we looked at just a moment ago, but let's take a look at it a little bit closely. Our terms code also defaults in from the supplier record, but as we noticed a moment ago, it can be changed to any of the terms codes set up in your system. The terms codes then can be further updated. So maybe normally, you have a net 30, but in this particular case, you have a discount percentage and a discount date. Now, there also is like say a 210 net 30, which if selected, that will bring in the discount date automatically, show our 2% discount, what the discount base is, and then our amount of the discount. In this case, since 2% of $1,000 is 20 bucks. And then I can take a look at my totals, my total amount net of tax, and then my discount with my net payable estimated to be $980. I do have an optional field tab as well on the invoice itself. So this will be invoice level information, whereas what we glanced at a moment ago here in the detail grid is line item information. And so depending upon the needs of your organization, you might have optional fields set up at either or both those levels. When you are ready, you can hit the add button. Now, in my case, it went straight to the next record. That is because in the settings, I have it set to auto clear. That is the default setting in Sage. If you uncheck this, when you hit the add button, it will retain remain on that entry. And if you need to start a new entry, you will come up here and hit the green plus button. We're going to do a credit from a supplier here, and I am going to select a different uh, vendor here. And in this case, I'm going to select credit note. I'm going to give it a credit note number. And notice now I have an apply to document. I can open up my screen here and I can see all the various transactions um, that I've received from the supplier and say, this one is going to be applied to a particular uh, transaction. So we're gonna select this one here. What, will, what this means is it will automatically apply the credit 
to this particular invoice if that particular invoice is still open. If that invoice has already been paid, then it will just be a credit on your account. Again, I'm going to put in a document total in here. So amount of our credit in this case is going to be $250. And my GL line has already been established. And so I'm going to enter my GL amount here in my GL field. And because taxes are being distributed on this particular transaction, I actually need to adjust my document total uh, by uh, a little bit more here. To match. Now, typically when doing that, you would be given that number already uh, by the document that you are uh, trying to process. Again, I can review my taxes tab, I can review my optional fields tab, and I can review my totals tab. And I can hit the add button and move on to my next transaction. Please notice that as we go through this, the number of entries and the total amount gets updated as we add each new transaction. So right now we have two entries totaling $729.37, which is the sum of the $1,000 and the $270 credit that we just processed. Okay, we are going to create another example transaction in here, this time using the distribution set feature. Put my invoice description in and I'm going to call up vendor 2300 Torrington Limited. Now when I use my distribution set bookkeeping fees, I can assign, there's a document total here, so I'm going to say document amount and how much are we going to distribute? And I'm going to hit the create distribution. Notice that it added four different lines allocating the amounts in a predefined manner. That is set up in the AP setup distribution sets, bookkeeping fees, and it's allocated the percentages based on what was previously configured. Please refer to the Sage 300 user guide or talk to your business partner about how to set up and maintain distribution sets. It also brought in one line here that was set up on the supplier itself. I'm going to go ahead and use my delete key to remove that particular detail line. I now have my distribution on there. I need to give it a document number and I can hit the add button and I have created my AP invoice entry. When I'm done and ready and satisfied that my batch is complete, I'm ready to post it. I can browse back to one of my selections and hit the post button here, which will post this batch. So all three entries in the batch will get posted to the AP sub ledger uh, and then onto the general ledger or I can close this and do it through the AP Transactions Invoice Batch List screen. I can set my ready to post to yes and hit either the post or the post all button. If I have multiple batches and I have them set ready to post, the post all button will post multiple batches at the same time. There is also an option here in the transaction menu to post batches and you can select invoice and post and it will post all your batches or a range of batches that you select. I'm going to hit the post all button to post my batch. And it has told me that my invoice has posted and it actually created it down in the general ledger because that's how I have my GL integration set up. And that concludes this training on how to enter 
and invoice in Sage 300 accounts payable. Thank you for watching and have a great day.